Back to the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. I'm Cheryl Garlock with Colorado Front Range Properties. And you guys, I am so glad you could join us today on the show. You know, this is a show all about residential real estate. We talk about investment properties. We talk about homes you want to buy and homes you want to sell. But it's all about residential properties. So if you got a question, you want something answered, hey, even better than that, you want some help from us, just give us a call at 719-321-7600. Now, my very special guest today is Andy Shin with AY Realty. Andy, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Oh, thank you. It's good to be here. Oh, it's always great for you to be here there. And Andy specializes in property management. That is really his area of expertise. And you guys are going to find out today exactly why you need some expert advice when you're dealing with property management, particularly if you're the owner. And there are definite things you as a tenant need to be aware of that we're going to be talking about as well. So let's first talk about if you're the owner of a property and you're a landlord, yeah. the biggie. How do you stay out of court? That is a big one, isn't it? Yeah. How do you do that? I'll tell you, uh, Cheryl, I'm, I'm fortunate we don't have a lot of evictions, but the other day I, I did uh, have an eviction, so I was in eviction court and um, sitting through waiting for my case and we got yeah. our, our, our order of possession, no, no problem, but sitting through waiting, uh, there were three uh, private owners uh, with renters their eviction court trying to get their order of possession and it was just a, uh, it wasn't pleasant. Uh, in terms of the stress they were going through, in terms of not necessarily being prepared for that court uh, date, not knowing what they needed to have with them to, to get that order of possession. Yeah. Yeah, not, not a pretty sight. And uh, I'll tell you, if you have a property manager, you know, I'm, I'm there representing my owner. I've never, never had an owner have to go to court. So yeah. uh, you, you just stay out of court, I, you know, as property manager. Uh, your property manager is going to take care of that for you, and it's part of your management fee. You don't pay mm -hmm. extra for that, so I'm, I'm there as present for that. Oh, that's a big deal. Stuff. It's part of your management fee already there to go ahead and go to court. Yeah, and there's you know there's a, a filing fee, and if you use an attorney, uh, you have a small fee, but you'd be surprised it's not very much. And but uh, yeah, you don't pay anything for your property manager's time, and again, they're they're going to keep you from having to having to go to court yourself. So and you know, uh, I know from uh, firsthand experience, uh, what Andy says is correct. If you are actually the individual owner of the property and you're renting your property, managing it yourself there, and you decide to go ahead and uh, say you have to evict somebody, you better know to a T, and I mean to a T, exactly what is required. You better have your ducks in a row. And let me just tell you one key secret. Those judges or referees, whatever you want to call them in eviction court, okay, they like the KISS principle. Keep it simple and keep it stupid. Keep it laid out. Keep it clean. And that is exactly what you got to do. And you better have your chronology down. Boom, boom, boom. Your eyes dotted and your T's crossed. Otherwise, you're walking out with nothing. And guess whose favor that goes to? And I'll tell you, it's, it is. It's, it's almost like a checklist mentality. You, you either have it or you don't have it. There's no discussion. There's no, um, you know, the magistrate's not trying to figure out who, who did what. It's just you either have it or you don't. And it's really important that you know what to bring. Yeah, and you know, by and large, in a lot of those uh, situations there too, you only get like one shot to say your piece. I mean, you, you don't get to kind of go, but, 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 but later on, and when the, the uh, uh, tenant pipes up and then, but no, 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 no. They, the only person who gets to do that is the judge or the magistrate. Yeah, it's it's not like those court TV shows where you you get, yeah. to, you get to watch and everybody's yeah. going back and forth and there's arguing. Judge doing, Judy. <laughs> it's not <you're> not <laughs> it's not quite like that. You you get to to present your papers. You may or may not get to say anything, and and you either have it or you don't. Oh yeah, absolutely. There. So that is a big deal, you guys. Um, now let's talk about damages where it's done to a rental. Oh gosh, you know. Yeah. Now I mean it never happens, right? Okay. How do you assess that damage? How do you apply the security deposit? How do you go after the renter after that? Yeah, and, and this is a tough one because um, there's so many things to know when you're assessing damage. First of all, uh, if you're replacing uh, anything, uh, and I can't think of anything that wouldn't apply, if you're replacing anything, you have to depreciate it. People don't know this. Mm -hmm. And they get in trouble because they hold the deposit because I had to replace the living room carpet, and they didn't depreciate it. And guess what? We talked about this last time. The renter's coming back to them three-time damages in Colorado if you get it wrong. So you got to know what do you have to depreciate. Repairs you usually don't have to depreciate, and the reason is because de uh, depreciation sometimes it's called betterment. The idea is that if the landlord's coming out better uh, after the fact, then you've got to give some credit on that. So if you're putting in brand new carpet, well, you didn't have brand new carpet, 
you gotta you gotta take some some uh, cut off of that so that you're not made better at the end. So anything you're replacing that has a lifespan, you're gonna have to uh, go ahead and depreciate. Other damages though, you wanna have somebody come through a professional. You don't just wanna write this on a piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, let me back up there. So anything yeah. that you have to depreciate it would have a limited lifespan. Limited lifespan. A yeah. limited lifespan. Yeah. That could be uh, you know the aluminum blinds. Right. Uh, it could be a vinyl floor. It could be carpet. All those things have limited lifespan. You got to know yeah. what's the approximate, how many years, and then depreciate based on that. And you can some items you can get from the uh, IRS depreciation uh, recommendations. Others you just have to do a little research to figure out how long should I be depreciating this particular item. Yeah. So. Well, if you have like a, a kitchen sink though that uh, has a no limited lifespan, then you have to replace it. You have to replace that's it. That's right. And something that's designed to live with the house pretty much for the life of the house. Yes. You're not going to have to. Right. Have to so, it. so you yeah. kind of that's a really good subtle difference, but an important right. difference. That's and right. I do think carpet is a is usually the biggie. It is, and because uh, so often that's that is the damage. There's a room of carpet. Hopefully not a house of carpet, but sometimes a room of carpet maybe where the yep. pet. Uh, the you know the pet did some damage and people just don't understand that no, you do have to depreciate that uh, replacement repairs usually not so if you've got a vinyl floor and you're able to do a repair on that uh, it's nothing out of pocket you can take that from the renter's security deposit mm, absolutely there I don't know I I just had the pleasurable experience of somebody using chemicals on a carpet oh, no. to clean it yeah. and it totally did damage it well and sometimes the the stains that they're trying to get rid of they end up making them worse by trying to to, to use oh, yeah, so we had to replace it. Yeah, if you get a professional in first, yes. you usually can get some of that stuff up. But if you try it yourself, but they didn't. all of a sudden... They yeah. didn't. They yeah. tried... Ashley told me they tried a whole bunch of chemical solvents. Better to leave the dirt stain and let a professional come yeah. in and clean that up there. Don't try to save the money. That, you know, that's just going to hurt them because now they got to pay for the damage. And, you know, it's not even that expensive to have a carpet professional. Oh, no, it isn't. It isn't not at all there. Okay, I don't have a whole lot of, uh, of other things on here or time on my hands here, but I want to ask you, what if a renter is undertaking an illegal activity? What are your rights as a landlord? In almost any lease, even if you're using your own lease or you got some online, it's going to say that the renter has to comply with local, state, and federal laws, which means that you can use that to uh, to evict somebody if you need to. You usually have to give them the three days to fix it. Yeah. Uh, and then if they don't, you could evict them. That could go for, uh, even in this state, it could go for growing or smoking marijuana because that's a, a federal law violation. Hopefully, though, you have something specific in your lease about whether or not you're allowing marijuana use in oh, yeah. the property. Right. Uh, and I know for ourselves, we absolutely do there. But but you yep. definitely need to probably reference that federal law there. Yep. So one really quick question here. We might have to carry it over, but think about this one, Andy. Can I enter the home when I have tenants living there to see the condition? That's a big deal. I only got 30 seconds. Tell me what you know. Yeah, absolutely you can, but there's some restrictions on that. Maybe we can talk a little bit more after the break. But absolutely. Uh, you want to be in the house periodically. Check it out. Make let me tell you, you sure do. We got more to come from the Springs Radio Real Estate so show, show. Let me get my mouth fixed up there. So stay tuned for more from the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. We'll be right back.